So now let's go back and take a look at how to do the same from OVM trace. Okay, so from the OVM side, let's do OVM SBCTL dump flows and we're going to grep for RCMP. Okay, we, well, we want to grep for RCMP4, we don't care about 6. So clear that. Alright, this is what we've got. From the OVM side, these rules are a little bit easier to read. So if we come in on LR in um, IP input, and we match on 172, 16, 172, 20, 16, 22, and the ICMP type is 8, then the action will be to just keep going. So that, that's fine. There's nothing blocking that specific traffic. And the same here for 50.1. So that's fine. We should match there. Table 3. If the import is the LRP, and IPv4 and IPGTL is equal to 0 or 1. The action ICMP4, ether destination, ether source, time, so we're going to send a time exceeded in that case. So if the TTL is equal to 0 or 1, we're going to send a time exceeded, TTL exceeded in transit. So the thing we really want to look at in that output is, that, is these ACLs. So what we see configured in OVN is these ACLs that send information to this port group. So if we look at what that means on the neutron side. So what happens with ML2 OVN is that security groups correspond to OVN port groups. So a when we create a security group, that corresponds to an OVN port group. And when we create a security group rule, that corresponds to an OVN ACL. So let's take a look at these ACLs. So OVN MBCTL, find ACL. So here is some access control list. So this is what we saw before. We're looking at port groups. So we look at this one again. We can see that the out port goes to this port group that ends in F0C. So let's do find ACL and we want to find the one that ends in F0C. So here it is here. So the direction is from a logical port, the neutron security group rule ID. So we take this, go back to our OpenStack commands. Stack security group rule list grep. So there we go, we can see that we have this this rule here. So in this particular case, that rule is an egress rule. So we're not looking for egress, we're looking for ingress. So we'll, we need to keep looking. So this one here is two L port. So two a logical port traffic coming to a logical port. Let's take this one and let's see if this matches on the, the specific rule that we just added. So we'll do this command and we'll grep for this one. So we can see that this one is ingress and it's ICMP and it's going to anything. So we can see in this case that ingress and egress means that ingress is to L port and egress is from L port. That's from logical port and to logical port. So this is the rule here that allows us to ping that virtual machine. So we can see that the out port is equal to um, our, next, our next port group. And we IP4, IP4 source is anything, and the traffic type is ICMP4. So that's how security groups turn into ACLs within OVN, and how you can then find those rules, and you can understand what all of these mean. So what we've seen so far is how objects in OVN map to objects in Neutron. So routers, for example, will be logical router ports. Networks will be switches. Um, 
Fault groups will be security groups and ACLs will be security group rules. So that's how you can check that something in Neutron matches what's in OVN to your expectations. We looked at previously how to do the IF proto trace from the Open vSwitch perspective, but you can also do it from the OVM perspective using a tool called OVM Trace. So let's look at that now. So with OVM Trace, what we want to do is provide it the first argument being the data path. So the data path will be the object in OVM. So OVN NBCTL show. So this will be our data path. The data path is the object within OVN, in this case the router. This is where the traffic's going to come into, and this is what I want to test for how the traffic is handled. The next thing I need is an import. So this will be our import because the traffic needs to hit this port first and foremost. This is the external facing port of our router. So it needs to come in on this port. And then we have NAT rules set up. So we can't use the NAT rules. We need to use this port. It's the gateway port for our router. So if we look at our OVN trace command, the first argument we give it is the data path for the router. The next argument we give it is the port, the port we're expecting the traffic to enter via, which is this one. Now we want to give it all the information about that packet so that we know how it's going to be handled. So we give it the IPv4 source of my laptop, which is 192.168.185, the IP4 destination of the floating IP, so that's this one here, the Ethernet source of my router in this case, my physical router, and the Ethernet destination of the MAC address that corresponds to the floating IP. So if we take this MAC address and we go back to our director node and do open stack port list and we grep for that MAC address, it will be the MAC address of our floating IP address. So once we have that information in, we need to tell it that it's going to be an ICMP packet and it's going to be ICMP type equal to 8, which is the echo request. So then we run that. So, very similar to what we were seeing with OVS, and in fact, we can add the OVS output as well if we really wanted to complicate it, but we don't in this case. We just want to check it out like this. We can add summary, which will make it even easier to read. So we scroll up in summary. So we start from here. This is the very beginning of it. So first of all, it prints out what that flow looks like, which we know because we just gave it all the information. We're ingress into BNE OSP R1, and we're coming in on the logical router port. Then we can see that it goes through and it does all the same things that we just looked at in Open vSwitch. Remembering that Open vSwitch is being programmed by OVN. These two things aren't different. It's exactly the same information, but OVN is more capable of understanding the higher and uh, well, the lower level of networking, it's able to understand the intricacies of DHCP, broadcasts, multicasts, you know, all the things that OVS itself isn't good at doing. So all this information should look similar to what we get in OVS, but it just provides a bit more of a detailed output. So for example, we see multicast on the um, data plane infranet, multicast group to an unknown multicast group, egress on infranet, Import will be this import, output will be the provider network, next input, output to the provider network. So we'll do it again without the summary. Have a look at what it looks like without the summary. This breaks it down into those, those sections. So we'll go up. So we can see here that we ingress, and these are the tables now that it matches. So this is what we were looking at before. It's the same as if we do OVN, SBCTL, dump flows, we can see that it gives us the tables still. So from the OVN trace information, we can see that it ingresses into the router, it goes through all the rules, it does a bit of work, it needs to egress from the router out to the network, obviously. Then we ingress into the infrastructure network, which we would expect, we're coming into now that switch. We do an L2 lookup, so we look up the MAC address, we get the Ethernet destination, so we get from the FDB table the Ethernet destination, then we send it to the next, 
then we are going to multicast it out the infrastructure network, egressing on infranet on this import, on the outport provnet, so we're outputting to the provider network, and the traffic is able to make it to the virtual machine. So now we've blocked that traffic, but the OVN trace itself hasn't changed. So what we can use though to see that is OVN dtrace. So if we take in the output from um, so we take in the output from this app CTL OF proto trace where we have a drop, we have an implicit drop now because we've set that that rule, and we run OVN dtrace and pass it in that output. This gives us all the information from OVN and OVS, and we can see here that there is an ACL that is two logical port priority one zero zero one match out port neutron PG drop and IP drop. So that's where our drop is occurring now. Now if we go back to here and we re-add that rule, the group rule create. So ping works. We go back and we capture this again. SCP it again. run the OVN dtrace. Now we can see that it's making it through with more more details this time and we can see that the chassis it sends that traffic to is over cloud compute 0bne-home.net. So obviously some complicated concepts there but it's all about trying to, to it's all about knowing the tools exist. If you know the tools exist it's easy to find information about them but if you don't know they exist to begin with it's really hard to know where to start. So I don't expect that anyone who watches this will remember how to do any of this stuff. But the main thing is that you know that the tool exists and then you will be able to figure out how to use it from there. Or maybe you can come back and reference this video and be like, hey, I know that that D-Trace tool exists and it's going to show me the chassis, but I can't remember exactly how to do it. You can come back here and you can see how we did that in this case. So the main, the main takeaways from the video that I, I just want people to understand is that OVN creates logic flows. Those logic flows are translated into open flow rules. Now, whenever you get an open flow rule that Open vSwitch doesn't understand, it just sends it the raw packet information, like we got when we TCP dumped and we got the hexadecimal for the packet and then use OC, um, OVS TCP undump to turn that into a big long string. That's exactly what it looks like in OVS. In fact, I'll show you an example. If we go back to the compute node, do OVS, OFCGL, dump flows on BR int, grep for controller. So see packets like this, for example, where we have actions controller and then we send this user data. We're sending hexadecimal information to the OVN controller so that the controller can then work with that information that OVS wouldn't be able to traditionally work with. So here, for example, where we set the, the source MAC address, network source, the de network destination, blah, blah, and then we send this information in hex to our OVN controller to, to translate into what that means in logic flows. So OVS and OVN are one in the same, but OVN extends the functionality of OVS and gives you some of the more advanced features that you need for a modern SDN solution. Um, as I mentioned, I have showed the um, the load balances in a previous video, and I'll link to that below as well. But basically, if you're if you're used to a traditional um, Octavia deployment, where we would deploy an M4 or VM, which is basically just a virtual machine running HA proxy, and then the um, Octavia process communicates with HA proxy over the REST API to program the the load balancer. This uses logic flows to represent those load balances. Now, there's at the moment there's some limitations. You can't do everything you could do with HA proxy. HA proxy, for example, can do L7 load balancing, whereas OVN can only do L3 or 4. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll double check that. So I, I think TCP, like TCP ports, is the highest level of load balancing you can do with OVN. But that's all represented in logic flows. So 
The, the main concepts to remember is that the OVN northbound database has the OVN representations of neutron objects, neutron routers, neutron networks, neutron security groups, security group rules, etc. That all exists only in the database. The southbound database contains all of the logic flows, and these logic flows are what dictate how a packet is handled through the network at any given time. The southbound database is replicated on every node in the cluster. So every node in the cluster knows exactly how to handle that packet when it comes in. So when something is updated, that update is dispersed to every single node and every single node now knows how to handle that traffic. The packet knows which, so from my perspective, when I send an ICMP packet out my laptop, it knows which physical compute node to get to as determined by the gateway chassis and the priority of that rule on the logical router within OVN. You can determine which nodes are going to receive and send that traffic using the enable chassis as gateway option in OVS. So not every node in the cluster needs to have that. If you're using DVR, maybe a handful of nodes will get that, but they don't all need to have that. And very important to remember that just because the virtual machine is on one compute node, it doesn't mean that traffic is going to leave that exact compute node. The traffic might leave any of the compute nodes. The point of DVR is to have distributed virtual routing. So if any of those nodes go down, the traffic can still go out. It's still distributed. It's just not that specific node that the virtual machine is running on. So don't be tricked into thinking, I'm TCP dumping on the compute node the virtual machine is running on. Why can't I see the traffic? You need to look at what the gateway chassis is, what the priority is, and then go to that node and TCP dump to figure it out. So I, I could move my gateway chassis to the controller and that traffic would still work. It just means it would come into the controller, it would get wrapped in a Geneve header, pushed through the Geneve tunnel, destined for the compute node that's running the virtual machine, and the virtual machine will then receive it. If you have any trouble troubleshooting anything and you need to figure out why your packet isn't reaching the virtual machine, you TCP dumping on the right compute node for the gateway chassis, you can see the packet, it's just not getting to your virtual machine, then you can use the OVS app CTL OF proto trace to trace that packet. And the easiest way to do that is using the blog post that I'll link below where you use TCP dump to capture a hexadecimal representation of the packet. You use OVS TCP undump to turn that into a string that can be interpreted by Open vSwitch and then you use that to um, trace that packet through the open flow rules. You can then take that output and use that in OVN dtrace to understand the entire layout of the logic flows and the open flow rules and everything from the OVN perspective. You can do all of the OVN stuff from a single controller node. You could do it from the computer as well, but you would need to set the database endpoint. So I would recommend just logging into one of your controllers, exec into the OVN controller container, and run all of your commands from there. I know there's, there's a lot to comprehend in, in a video like this, and there's no way I could ever cover everything, but I will leave some resources below, and if you do have any questions that you think of, or anything that you would like, a deeper explanation of. I'm happy to do that, leave them in the comments below. And in an upcoming video, we're going to take a look at how um, OpenShift does exactly the same thing using OVN and what constructs are the same, what constructs are different, and how we can use the knowledge we've learned here and apply that to troubleshooting uh, network traffic to a pod, for example, running in OpenShift. So I hope that's helpful in understanding OVN. Obviously, a lot to take in. Please leave me any questions if you have them. And I'll see you in the next video where we look at OpenShift.